What do all of these things have in common? They can be frozen to extend their best by date. Good morning, everybody. This is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead. And today I am going to show you how all of these products can be frozen. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I love to vacuum seal products. But did you know there's something even easier than vacuum sealing? And that is freezing your foods. Today I'm going to tell you some uncommon foods that do just fine by being stored in the freezer. These are frozen raspberries and they are not all stuck together. There's a trick to keep them that way. When I find raspberries on sale and these were a dollar a pint, I immediately bring them home and freeze them. The trick to not getting them all stuck together in a glob is to spread them out on a baking sheet. So I will spread my fresh berries out and put the entire baking sheet into my freezer. Then a few hours later when they are frozen, I pour them into large Ziploc bags. These are just a few of the gallon size bags I have in my freezer that hold all of my raspberries. Now I freeze my raspberries, blueberries, strawberries. A lot of these I do raise myself. Um, but others, if I find them on sale, I definitely will take them and freeze them. That way, they don't go bad. Now, what can you do with frozen raspberries? You can add them to smoothies. You can thaw them and make jams and jellies. I do that a lot, but most of these, I dehydrate them straight from the freezer and make fruit powder. And this is what fruit powder is. It is simply 100% fruit that you have dried and put into a powder. The next item is crescent rolls. So few people know that you can store them in your freezer. Look at the price of those crescent rolls. 25 cents a pack for organic ones. The reason they were so low, they were close to expiring. So what do I do? I buy 20 of them and I put them in my freezer. But how do you use crescent rolls that are frozen? Here's the trick. When you know you're going to use them for dinner, take them out of the freezer and put them in your refrigerator. Do not put them on your countertop, especially in the summer. They will explode. So put them in the refrigerator and slowly warm them up. The next item is milk. I freeze half of the milk that comes into my house. How do I do that? I buy twice what I need. See the date? I have just extended that date by one year, simply because I froze it immediately. Now, organic milk already lasts much longer. And to freeze it, I'm not doing anything special. If you look, this is a little bowed out. That's because I use the original container. I stick them right in the freezer. Now to use this, I slowly defrost it either by putting it in my sink for a little bit or by putting the whole thing into the refrigerator. And here's a secret, whole milk does not separate. So when it's time to use it, all I do is give it a good shake and it is good. If you are using low fat milk, it's probably gonna separate. I tried doing light cream and mm, just did not work. But whole milk and 2% milk can easily be frozen. The next is spaghetti. Now wait, Deb, I thought you vacuum sealed all your pasta. I don't for spaghetti. Here is the problem with vacuum sealing spaghetti. It's too tall. So I had spent years breaking it into smaller pieces before putting it in the jar. But you know what? It's time consuming and it's much easier just to freeze it. And here is my little trick. This container holds my spaghetti perfectly. So all I have to do, instead of having loose boxes of spaghetti throughout my freezer, is I put it in the container and I put the lid on tight. And these are easy because it just snaps. Just like that. Now, when I wanna use my spaghetti, I just take out a box right before I cook it. I pour out what I need. I don't even need to thaw it. I cook what I want, I put what's left back in the freezer. I do the same thing with my lasagna noodles. Have you noticed some of these price tags? You got it. 
I love to shop at Amish discount stores and I purchase food that is not expired, but it is close to being expired. And so I freeze it. Next is baked goods. This is a pumpkin roll. And at Christmas time, they were selling them for $10 each. But after Christmas, they were 75 cents. I don't even change the packaging. I just seal it tight and I throw it in my freezer. And then when I have company, it is very quick and easy to pull it out. And you know what? That cake is not dried out. It is moist just like the day I bought it. Same thing with this little bundt cake. All I do is freeze it. When it's time to serve, I bring it out of the freezer about an hour before we eat. I don't usually buy my items from the baked goods department, but look at this. For $1.50, I will definitely buy a cake that's ready to eat. Same thing, I'm gonna use their original packaging and just put it on tight and that is ready to go. Both of those items I will serve within the year. The next one is raw pizza dough. Yes, you can freeze your raw dough. Every Friday, I am so blessed. While I am at work, Jim is making homemade pizza. And so he makes pizza dough every single week. We use half of it to make the pizza and the other half goes into the freezer. Then during the summer when it's hay season or when we're busy in the garden, we can easily pull out the dough and let it rise and we are ready to make pizza. He pulls it out on Friday mornings when we wanna eat pizza for the evening. And talking pizza, did you know you can freeze your active dry yeast? It is so easy. We buy this off of Amazon. It is a hard brick. And what we do, we take the entire brick and we freeze it. This is our yeast container that we store in the refrigerator. So when we start to get low, we will open that up, pour in the new stuff, and then put this into a Ziploc and put it back in the freezer. So you can freeze yeast, you can freeze dough, you can also freeze pre-made bought from the store breads. This example, the entire bag gets thrown into the freezer and it's ready in about 10 minutes. All we have to do is pull out the number that we need for dinner, let them warm up and then bake. And these are English muffins. Same thing, now if you try to use the container that they come in, it's too big for our Ziploc. So we take them out and we freeze them then you can remove the ones you wanna eat individually. Concerned about the Best Buy date? Don't be, we froze these before the date had arrived. And so we're getting to the point where we're almost finished with these, it's been a year, um, but we definitely will try them and if they're still good, we keep eating them. Butter, I freeze all the butter that comes into the house that we're not able to use within a week. I buy twice what I need, put one in the refrigerator and one in the freezer. And once I have about 20 pounds of butter in the freezer, I can it. We also freeze all of our cheeses, whether it is shredded cheese or a block of cheese. We love cheese in this family. And so I was a little discouraged. I would buy shredded cheese and we'd only use part of the bag. And the next time I went to use it, it smelled funky. Not anymore, I keep it in the freezer. And as far as block cheese, when you wanna use it, all I do is pull it out of the freezer and stick it in my refrigerator and it is good to go. I can use it in macaroni and cheese. I can use it to slice and put on a burger. I can also just use it to eat. It will hold far longer in your freezer. Here's a little secret about shredded cheese. I store it in my freezer. I don't keep it in the refrigerator. Then when I'm cooking a recipe, I just take it from the freezer, sprinkle it on my food, and it will melt. And if you're looking to save money, you can buy shredded cheese in big two to five pound packages. I often get those, separate it myself, and store it in the freezer. Next is flour. Now, I almost exclusively keep my flour in vacuum sealed jars, but every once in a while, I just don't have time. So I will run home from the store and throw it into my freezer. And why would you put flour in your freezer? Flour often has eggs in it for insects. And so if you put it in your freezer, it will kill anything that might try to hatch. Pretty gross, I know. And lastly is maple syrup. For years, we purchased our maple syrup from a local family. 
and we would get it in the huge metal tins. The easiest way to use them was to throw the entire container into the freezer. And believe it or not, I could take it from there and fill a smaller jar that I kept in my refrigerator. And when you pour it in, it's not frozen solid. It will actually pour out frozen in a liquid form. And there you have it. Those are some items you can store in your freezer. What are some things you keep in your freezer? If this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. And have a great day. Bye-bye.